Hey, everyone. So last night I was doing some organizing, some cleaning. I should have filmed it because I think it would have made like a fun therapeutic video. Maybe I like watching those videos on occasion, but honestly, I wasn't planning on doing it. I feel like the inspiration just hit me at the right time. I had an hour of quiet. My toddler was sleeping. My husband was at a work thing. And I was like, I'm just going to go through and clean. But as I was cleaning my makeup collection and just like reorganizing products and putting things away, I decided to declutter some things. So if you're new to my channel, every spring, I usually do a big declutter of everything and I'll go through drawer by drawer like blushes, eyeshadow palettes, highlighters, bronzers. So I did that back in, I want to say April. If you want to check it out, I'll link it below. Between those big declutters, I usually like to go through once or twice a year and just remove products that I'm no longer using, whether I've changed my mind about them, whether the shades haven't worked well for me, or if at the end of the season, I realized I never used them. It's time to declutter those as well. And the reason I like to declutter my collection is just to keep my collection in check. I want to make sure everything in my collection is something I enjoy using, I love reaching for, and if it's not, I like to pass it along to friends and family so they can enjoy it before the product goes by goes bad. And I actually have a few expired products too, which just goes to show makeup does expire. So it's important just to kind of take a look at your own collection from time to time. If you are decluttering, Project Beauty Share also takes some lightly used makeup. They have some exceptions, so I would check out their website, but that's always a good option too. So anyway, let me share some updates on these products and share why I'm actually decluttering them, why they are no longer needed in my collection. Let's start with eyeshadow palettes. I'm actually really happy with my eyeshadow palette collection. It's the smallest it's been in a really long time. And it's definitely still a little bit bigger than I probably need for it to be. But for so many years, I had such an overwhelmingly large amount of palettes that I, I couldn't practically get to most of them. And in 2023, I actually used not, I won't say every single one, but I used a lot of my older palettes a ton because I just didn't buy as many. Anyway, one palette that I did not get to this year is the Get and Fresh palette by ColourPop. I think when I filmed my declutter video in the spring, I thought I would end up using this quite a bit during the summertime, and I just didn't. I have a lot of palettes that have very similar tones, and I love this color story. I think it's gorgeous. It really is like the perfect summer option. The warm toned neutrals, the golds, the bronzy tones are so beautiful on the eyes and I love the pops of green, the occasional pink, but I think I just have shades like this in so many other palettes that I didn't feel the need to like reach into my collection and grab this one. And I kind of forgot about it, to be honest. So I'm just not using this enough to justify keeping it in my collection any longer. I'm going to pass this product along and see if someone else will be able to get a lot more use out of it because the quality is great. The colors are gorgeous. I just know that I have other shades in other palettes. I don't need to keep this one. Actually, another palette from ColourPop. This one is the Clay It Cool. I don't really want to declutter this one because it's gorgeous. And the quality is so good. I honestly think it's better than a lot of their other palettes in terms of quality. Like the shadows are so rich and intense and it really does perform like a high-end palette. I used to say that ColourPop's quality was very consistent, but I found that over the last few years, it does kind of differ. So some palettes are amazing, some are pretty mediocre. This is one of their more amazing palettes in terms of quality because the formula, like I said, is great. The matte shadows are so rich and intense and the shimmers are just like liquid metal. They look amazing on the eyes. The reason why I'm not reaching for this one very often, again, is just because I have other palettes like this and I wasn't wearing like a ton of super intense, really orangey, red, warm toned looks. I would go for that on occasion, but I have a lot of shadows like that in my collection. And because this one is so good, I really don't want it just sitting in my collection going unused. I want to give it to someone who will actually enjoy it and get a lot of use out of it. So I don't know if they actually even still sell this one. If they do, I do recommend it if you need a palette like this in your collection. And you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just not reaching for it. The last palette is this one from from NYX. It's the Ultimate Edit Palette. Kind of along the same lines, I'm just not wearing these tones a ton. And I have a few shades like this from Patrick Ta in the Major Dimension palettes. And when I wear those shades, those are the palettes that I usually reach for. In fact, a lot of people were saying ColourPop's Clay It Cool was a good alternative to the Patrick Ta palette. I can't remember if it was the first one or the second one. I feel like there are shades from both Patrick Ta palettes that are very similar to the shades in here. And I would say that is true. And same thing with this next one. This next one formula is not as good as ColourPop or Patrick Ta. So again, I just feel like I personally don't need it. NYX did launch some new eyeshadow palettes in 2023 and the quality is really good. They've definitely improved their eyeshadow quality. I'm actually decluttering another NYX product, but there's nothing wrong with the quality of this. I think the quality is actually really good. It is the NYX Wonder Stick. It's their dual ended cream blush 
stick. So it has two different options, which I really enjoy. And I think what I've come to learn about myself is I'm not the biggest fan of cream cheek products in the stick form. I prefer for them to come in a pot because I just find them a little bit easier to apply to my skin. Whenever I take a stick and apply it directly to my face, inevitably it just lifts the foundation underneath as I go to blend it in. If I'm using a pot, I feel like typically the formula is a little bit creamier, so it glides on, whereas these tend to have almost like a little bit more of a stick to them, so it it just lifts my foundation. There are definitely ways to work around that. Like you can apply it to the back of your hand and then use a brush on the back of your hand. You can apply it directly to the brush. But because this is like a smaller, more precise stick, I just find that it's a little bit harder to work with in the way that I prefer to do my makeup. I either have to draw like so much on or it doesn't like evenly coat the brush. It's just, it's kind of nitpicky. But now that I know that about myself, I'm not typically buying a lot of cream sticks unless they're bigger, like the Makeup by Mario one, because that one can evenly coat a brush super quickly. So I love the product. It's just not practical for the way that I like to apply my makeup, which is why I'm decluttering this. I'm actually decluttering these blushes from Tower 28 as well. Mine expired and I'm so sad about it. I had one a little bit longer than the other, but one I've probably had for less than a year. So I saw a picture either on like Instagram or TikTok where someone was sharing that their Tower 28 blushes had expired. And as I was like going through my collection last night, I was like, oh, I should check on mine. And mine actually expired as well. So one question I get when I film these videos is like, how do you know a product has expired? There are a few different ways to tell if it smells different, if it looks different, if the texture has changed or the color has changed, that can sometimes be a good indication that the product has expired and it's time to get rid of it. Usually those are pretty obvious telltale signs for me. And cream products do expire faster than powder products, which is always something good to keep in mind because I personally have really gotten into cream products a lot over the last few years, but I think I need to kind of slow down when it comes to buying them because they don't last forever. Like no makeup does, but especially creams. So with these two blushes in particular, the texture has just changed completely. And you can just tell by looking at them that they are expired. I've had the shade Magic Hour for a while, so I'm not really surprised surprised that this one did expire, but I think I just got office hours last spring. So I am kind of surprised by that one. It sucks because Tower 28 blushes, while they're not like outrageously expensive compared to other brands at Sephora, they're still high-end blushes. And I feel like I didn't have them quite as long as I would have liked to. So that's something to keep in mind when it comes to buying creams. I checked my bronzer from the brand and that's still good. It was just my blushes. So I have to actually get rid of these. Another product that expired that I have actually had for a really long time is the Makeup Revolution Liquid Powder Pore Blurring Makeup Serum. The last few times I used this, I felt like the texture wasn't the same. And this is such an interesting product because it basically has like powder suspended in liquid. So when you shake it up, they kind of mix together and then when you apply it to your skin, it's supposed to leave your skin a little bit more mattified throughout the day. My issue with this product is every time I shake it up, the products don't seem to mix together and you can kind of see in the dropper that there's like powder in there. But when the product is working how it's supposed to, it basically just mixes together and you can't see the separation of the powder in the liquid. So I need to either replace this. I don't know if they still make this. It was originally like a dupe for a Farsali product that got discontinued and I wish they would bring the Farsali product back. Farsali took a break for a little while, but they are back and I just don't think they've brought back their, I forget what the name was, like their liquid powder blurring serum. No, that's the name of this one. It was something similar. So I might see if Makeup Revolution still sells this, but honestly, it's not something I need during the winter, so I'll probably wait on that. Okay, I am going to declutter the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand, specifically the highlighters. I don't have the blushes and contour wands in my collection. I own them because I'm saving them for like a worst of 2023 video, which will be up soon. And I know a lot of people love the Halo Glow Wand, so I'm not telling you they're like the worst product ever, but honestly, for me, they really weren't great. Every Every single time I used the contours or the blushes, they looked so patchy on my skin. The blush highlighted so much texture on my face and the highlighters weren't quite as bad, which was weird because highlighters are obviously like a little bit more metallic and glowy, but I just don't like these as much as I like other highlighter wands in my collection. I prefer Flower Beauty, Milani. I, I generally am not as much of a fan of a liquid highlighter as I am a liquid blush, so I just don't need to have like 
tons and tons of options. And I just feel like these are sitting in my collection going unused. So I'd rather give them to someone else who can actually enjoy them. I don't know. A ton of people love the Halo Glow Beauty Wand line. And every time I talk about them and say like, I don't really love them, I see so many comments from people saying they really enjoy them. So I do think I have a little bit of an unpopular opinion when it comes to that line. I wanted to like it. Like if you've been around my channel, you know that I'm a big elf fan. So I'm not just, you know, not liking them on purpose. They really just don't look great on my skin. This product is from Milani, and I do like the Milani Liquid Contours and Liquid Highlighters, but this is their Cheek Kiss Liquid Blush Highlight in the shade Luminoso. I feel like this could have been so good, but it's not, it's not pigmented enough to be a blush, and it's not flattering on my skin tone as a highlighter. It does have a really pretty like peachy sheen to it. So this could work for you as a highlighter depending on your preferences or your skin tone or maybe as a blush if you do have a lighter skin tone too. But I feel like every time I use it, I want something more. Like I was hoping that it would be a good alternative to the Charlotte Tilbury liquid blush in Peach Gasm because that's kind of on my wish list. I do have one of hers and... I forget what shade I have. It's a little bit more pinky. It's great. And I still kind of want to buy the peach toned one, but I feel like this just needs a little more pigment to be a good blush, even on my lighter skin tone. Again, it might be ideal as a highlighter on you, or maybe you will like it as a blush. The formula is not bad. It just, it's so subtle that I feel like every time I wear it, I'm just underwhelmed by it. So that's why I'm decluttering this one. It's kind of a similar case with this Tarte Man Eater Blush and Glow Cheek Plump. The difference is this formula feels like it could be really good. Like I've tried so many times to like this, but the shade I have, Buffed Peach, is just too light for my skin tone. It really doesn't show up on my skin. And based on the photos online, I thought it was going to have more pigment. A lot of you said that you've tried blushes from this line and they do run very, very light. So if you are thinking about trying this, I would go darker than you normally would when it comes to cheek products. This formula is pretty, but it doesn't look good all the time. Like I've tried this on bare skin. I've tried it over a skin tint, over a foundation. And honestly, I've been more into skin tints lately or just like a little bit of concealer. So I feel like since my preferences have changed a little bit, this does look better on the skin. It definitely has this smooth quality to it. It makes your skin look glowy and healthy. So, so pretty. But if I am applying a little bit too much or wearing it, on top of like a typical foundation, it will erase all of my foundation underneath because it is such a liquidy, almost like wet product. I've tried a lot of liquid blushes this year and some liquid blushes lay perfectly on top of regular foundation, but some that almost have more of like a watery texture like this one are more ideal if you're not wearing like a ton of base makeup, just in my experience. And then this is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation. I love this product during the summertime. It is very, very mattifying, but it has really good coverage, but it's really skin-like. It doesn't look heavy on the skin. It doesn't look cakey. Like your skin truly looks like skin when you wear it but it stays in place well. And again, it has that coverage. This shade is just too dark for me. I have the shade light. It matched me last summer when I bought it. And then when I was doing my declutter, I was like, I'll keep it around and I'll wear it this summer, but it was still way too dark for me this summer. So I think I'm just going to pass it along. You can mix in, like I have a white pigment that I'll mix in with foundations that are a little bit too dark, but I find that that product really doesn't mix super well with this which is strange because that actually works well with every foundation I've tried. It's hard to explain. It They call it a full coverage moisturizer, but it doesn't feel like a moisturizer. It has this like thick whipped texture to it. And I feel like you have to apply it directly to the skin rather than like mixing in a mix-in pigment and then applying it with a brush. I use my fingers and like smooth it on the skin and then stipple it, or I'll even use like a damp beauty sponge to really blend it in. It doesn't feel like a typical tinted moisturizer. It has a lot of coverage. It definitely has like a moussey feel. I don't know, I like the product. I just feel like it doesn't work with my mix-in pigment. Otherwise I'd keep it and just mix that in. I feel like I actually have to go and purchase a lighter shade, which I probably won't do until next summer because it really is a product that I specifically use like July through September and that's it. I'm also decluttering the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. Mine, I think it expired at this point because every time I mix it back together, it separates the next day. And again, that's usually a telltale sign for me that a product has expired. You have to take into consideration whether it is a formula that separates, if it's very thin, very liquidy, it might be prone to that anyway. But I know that I've had this in my collection for a long time. So at this point, I'm assuming that it is expired because when I first purchased it, it never did that. So I like this product a lot. I do like their camo concealer, not as much these days because it definitely is more 
on like the matte full coverage side. I would say I prefer the hydrating camo concealer to that one, but it's just time to get rid of this one because it is no longer good. I am decluttering the Pixi On The Glow Bronze. This is their tinted moisture stick. I have the shade Soft Glow. It's just a little bit too light for my skin tone. I feel like this product, like I had such high hopes for it and it just didn't work out in the way that I wanted it to. Whenever I swipe it on the skin, again, it just lifts all of my makeup underneath. So you can apply it with a brush, but because it is so subtle, I feel like it doesn't really show up. Like this is what it looks like when I swiped a good amount of it on the skin. On my skin tone, I think you could, I could probably get away with using it as a highlighter maybe. It's just so subtle and I feel like it's almost a little bit too moisturizing, like a little bit too balmy because it ends up looking a little bit heavy on the skin and there's definitely a little bit of like a cakey look to it. You know how when some products are like so balmy and they just basically like bunch up all of your makeup, your concealer, your foundation, that's what this does on my skin. It is a really moisturizing formula. So I could see how some people might enjoy it. I feel like if they had, I think they do have blush versions of this, I might prefer those, but there are just so many cream products I like and I feel like are a little bit easier to use that interact well with other products I'm already wearing. There are two brow gels I'm decluttering. I'm pretty loyal to my NYX Thicket stick it brow gel but I wanted to try the brow glue from NYX. Originally they just launched a clear one and then when they came out with tinted ones I picked up the dark brown. This looks really good initially like it definitely lifts your brows. It gives you that laminated look like a super laminated look which isn't typically my favorite. I do like a lifted look but I usually want more of a hair like appearance like I want there to be actual texture to my brow instead of it being like slicked down to my skin which is what this product does do and I kind of knew that going into it but I also liked the idea of having like a stronger hold brow gel for days where I wanted that and what's weird about this one is I've seen people use it online and it locks their brows into place. But when I use it, my brows fall so fast. I don't know, I feel like my brow hairs are kind of hard to work with. Like between the two formulas, the Thicket Stick It and this one, I thought this one would have a stronger hold, but the Thicket Stick It just seems to work better with my brows. So this didn't work out very well for me. I think my sister, I'm pretty sure my sister actually uses the original brow glue. So I'll see if she wants to try the dark brown one. And then I did try the Milk Makeup Kush Fiber Brow Gel. I think I tried this in the past. I have the shade Grind. I think that this is good, but it's a little bit too pigmented for me. If you have really thick brows and you do like a pigmented brow gel, maybe you just have to like brush brow gel through them and you don't like to fill them in with a brow pencil or a brow pen, you might really like this product because it does hold the brows into place well. It almost has more of like a dry texture. Like once it dries down, your brows, they don't have like that shiny wet look. They definitely have more of a matte realistic look and they it holds them into place but it just deposits so much color. I feel like it's a little bit too much for me personally because it makes my brows look super intense right away and I need something a little bit more subtle. So the fact that it is so pigmented and so rich could be a selling point for you but it's just not practical for me with the way that I like to do my brows. I do have a few lip products, not a ton because I feel like as a whole, I'm really enjoying my lip collection. I have a lot of great formulas that are so good, but there are a few shades that I'm not loving on me. I love this formula from Essence. The label completely wore off. I think these are the Extreme Care Lip Glosses. They only have three shades. I think they have a clear or like a very light pink, this one, and then a cooler toned nude. And I love the cooler toned nude so much. This one is in soft peach. But whenever I wear this shade, I'm not in love with the way that it looks on me. I feel like I'm really particular about my pinks and I don't know what it is about this one, but it's just not super flattering on my skin tone. So that's why I'm decluttering it. I just haven't worn it a ton. I love the formula. Like it really does feel like a luxurious, rich, thick, glossy gloss. So I wish they had more shades to choose from. Uh, maybe they'll come out with more eventually, but this shade in particular is just not great on me. Same case with this one. This is a liquid lipstick from the brand Mented. I really like Mented lip products. I have a bunch of their glosses. I also have a bunch of, no, I have a bunch of their glosses and then I have a few of their lipsticks. And then I had one liquid lipstick. This shade, I think it's just a little bit too like rusty for me. When it comes to a red, I usually want like a true bright classic red or like a deep intense rich red. And this one is more of like 
a mid-toned brick red. The formula is nice. It's very, very lightweight, but when I wear this color, I'm like, oh, I just feel like I need something either a little bit brighter or a little bit deeper. So that's why I'm decluttering this one. And then finishing up, just a few more ColourPop products. This is the Party Proof Eye Primer. I've been using this a lot lately. I think I put it in my everyday makeup drawer for the fall season, just in an attempt to use it up completely. And it's fine, it works well enough, but it's not my favorite. And honestly, I don't wear eye primer every single day anymore. I, If I'm doing like quick, fast makeup, I'll just skip it and just go over my eyes with like my concealer brush, my foundation brush, just to cancel out any redness. If I am doing a more of an intense look like today, and I wear eye primer, there are other formulas I prefer. I really like the Smashbox eye primer. It's very silky, very smooth, and I feel like that's what my eyes need. This one's fine. I mean, it reminds me a lot of Urban Decay's Primer Potion. It's just not like my absolute favorite. So the fact that I've been like making myself use it over and over, every time I do use it and I do my makeup, I'm like, oh, I wish I had like a silkier primer on like the Smashbox one. So it's fine. It's just not anything super special, which is why I'm going to declutter it. I'm not a fan of this ColourPop formula, the Ultra Blotted Lifts. I probably shouldn't have tried these again. I tried them for the first time years ago and I wasn't really into them, but I feel like I do appreciate more of a sheer lip color more these days than I used to. Like I used to be all about super pigmented lip colors. So I thought maybe it would fit my makeup style more. And I just, I don't like these. They don't, they look patchy on me. I think it's because they have more of a matte finish. I like a sheer gloss, but I don't like a sheer matte lip product because it just ends up looking dry and uneven and I usually just want something that looks a little bit more complete. And even if I, you know, layer these up, they still look patchy and even if I, you know, embrace like the blotted look and add like a gloss on top, it they just don't look good. And on top of that, they feel really dry on the lips too. So, I'm personally not a fan of these. I know a lot of people like the ultra blotted lips or they like the blotted lip look, but if I'm going for that, I'll just use like a regular lipstick and just kind of like dab it on and use my finger to blend it in. And I'll go with the formula that actually feels good, that's creamy and a little bit more moisturizing. I just, this is not my preferred type of product. Finishing up with two ColourPop cheek products, I was looking through my Super Shock blushes and I love my Super Shock blushes, highlighters, bronzers. They're so beautiful on the skin, but I didn't wear this shade very much in 2023. It's called At First Blush. I think, I mean, I, I remember actually wearing it like once or twice and every time I did, I was like, oh, that's a little bit too intense for me. Again, I'm weird about my pinks, like my pink blushes, my pink lip products. And I feel like this one is a little bit too bright for me. Like it's too hot pink. It's super pretty. Like I would actually wear this on the eyes, but I just don't need to keep it for that reason. And there are other ColourPop Super Shock blushes I have in my collection that I like better. So that's why I'm decluttering this shade. And then I am decluttering this bronzer from ColourPop. Apparently I did have like a lot of products that went bad and that's just normal. Makeup does expire, which is why I think it's important to kind of just keep things in check and declutter from time to time. And again, it's a good reason not to over buy makeup because it won't last forever. And if you don't use it all the time, you might not get your money's worth. I did get my money's worth with this. I almost used it up fully. It's their Super Shock Bronzer in the shade Get Sandy. I was using it a lot last winter because it's very smooth, really easy to apply. And when I used it, it's weird. I hit pan on it and the pan itself like was a little bit discolored. So I assume that's just how it was because at that point it was only a few months old. And I actually don't even think it was like this when I did my declutter back in the spring, but I pulled it out to use it again and it's very clearly expired. So it is time to get rid of this product. I am going to repurchase it though because I love it for like quick, easy, natural makeup days. Hopefully this video can serve as a reminder that makeup does expire. I go through my makeup collection like every three months just to kind of refresh things. And when I went through my collection in September, most of these products were still good unless I missed the occasional one. But I think it's important to remember to go through your collection occasionally, whether you have a big collection or a small collection, because you don't want to be applying products that have expired. Also, because makeup expires, keep that in mind when you're buying things. Maybe you don't want to splurge on a high-end cream blush because it won't last as long. Maybe you're good with your five or six foundations and you don't feel the need to run out and buy a new one because those won't last forever. I feel like it helps keep things in check. And for me, I do have, you know, a little bit of a larger collection. I feel like as some 
someone who reviews makeup on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, I feel like my collection as a whole is pretty manageable, but I, I could always do better too. But that's why I personally find it really practical to declutter because if I'm going through my collection and I'm not using something, I can pass it along to someone else who might enjoy it before it goes bad, like friends or family or cousins. And you know, maybe you have someone in your life that would enjoy products like that too. Or of course there is the option of Project Beauty Share, which I'll link in the description box below if you want more info, more, more information about that. Okay, so that is the end of my video. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I'll link some more declutter videos for you on the screen if you want to check them out. And I'll see you soon with a new one. Bye.